So we're going to continue working with the graphs of some of our trigonometric functions. We're going to next work on the graph of the tangent of x. Now, to understand the graph of the tangent of x, realize that the tangent is the sine of x over the cosine of x. And we're going to have problems here like we did with our secant graphs. Because every time that the cosine is 0, you're going to have one of those vertical asymptotes again. So you're going to have problems here, exactly the same places that you have problems with the secant. So that graph is on the back of your handout. Secant had asymptotes at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, basically at odd multiples of pi over 2. So if you wanted to sketch those in here, the ones that you would see here on this graph in the interval it's shown are at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So there are your graphs. It's a much different shape. Kind of looks like the graph of a cubic function, if you're familiar with that. And we can play with this one a little bit. You can do things to it. For instance, what would happen if I looked at the graph of y equals negative tangent of x? What would that do to my graph? It's going to flip it. Yeah, it's going to flip it. And then, after I flip it, what if I put, instead of a negative 1, what if I had a negative 2? That negative 2 is going to stretch the graph. So you're going to have the same asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. But what I want you to do is think for a second, see if you can't identify which one's the graph of the tangent, which one's the graph of negative, excuse me, which one's the graph of negative tangent, which one's the graph of negative 2 times the tangent. So just kind of zoomed in on this graph a little bit. See if you can't figure out which one is which. Remember, we're going to take the graph of the negative tangent and then stretch it away from the x-axis. All right, got your guesses in. It's that bottom one that's the graph of negative the tangent. And the other one is a graph of negative 2 times the tangent. Because what's happening with the second graph is you're stretching it away from the x-axis. By multiplying it by 2, you're doubling the height. So you take this here, and it doubles. It goes from negative 1, uh, actually negative 2 here, up to negative 4. Or positive 2 to positive 4, because you're doubling that distance. So you're stretching it away. That's why you get this second graph. But let's see if we can't figure out what the graph of problem number 22 is going to look like. And our work here for problem number 22 is going to be very similar to what our work was for problem number, I don't know, 28, 30, 32. You're first going to have to start by considering, well, where, where is this thing going to have its asymptotes? So let me do that here. Problem number 22, we've got y equals the tangent of x over 2. To best understand this, let's write this as sine of x over 2 divided by cosine of x over 2. Okay. Where am I going to have problems with this graph? What could create a problem here? Yeah, the denominator being 0. So I want to know where does that equal 0? So cosine of x over 2 equals 0. 
Now there's one of two places where this happens. It's either odd multiples of pi over 2 or n pi. Which case is it for the cosine? Yeah, odd multiples of pi over 2. So this equals 0 when x over 2 equals 1 plus 2n over 2 times pi. And now I've got to solve for x. What am I going to do here to solve for x? Any suggestions? Multiply by 2. Yeah, which is you know effectively multiplying by the reciprocal. Thank you. So if I multiply by 2 on both sides, then I get a little bit of nice cancellation. 2's cancel here, and 2's cancel here. And that's it. I get x is 1 plus 2n times pi. Now 1 plus 2n is always just going to be an odd number. 2n would be an even number. 1 plus 2n is going to make it an odd number. So if you do our little charts here, I've been consistent about doing this. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. At 0, I get pi. At 1, I get 3 pi. Plugging in a 2 there, I get 5 pi, and so on. This is where you're going to get your asymptotes. So odd multiples of pi. So the work here is not a lot different. And then the, for the rest of this, once you get your asymptotes, you can take out your graphing calculator and figure out, all right, does it have, you know, kind of a shape up, like the cubic function, or a reflected shape? So tangent is something that you can graph directly in your graphing calculator. In this case, we're going to take this shape and stretch it out a little bit. You're lengthening or dividing the period by 2 or divided by 1 half, which is effectively multiplying it by 2. So our graph here is going to look something like this. Again, these are asymptotes. Your graph should approach but not touch these lines. And it's going to go through the center here, so that's going to be at 2 pi. and so on. I'm just looking for the basic shape and the proper asymptotes. So the asymptotes are already drawn for you. We've got them at x equal pi, x equal 3 pi, negative pi, and negative 3 pi. And there's your graph. So it's not a whole lot different than what we were doing for the secant and the cosecant. Are we okay with problem number 22 here? The only difference then in working with the tangent versus the cotangent is the form of the function. Cotangent is going to put the cosine on the uh, bottom of your fraction. So it's going to be some sine function over a cosine function. And you're going to have to go back to understand where the cosecant was equal to 0. The cosecant was equal to 0 at points that had this form. Um, 1 plus 2n over 2 times pi. So basically odd multiples of pi over 2. What does the graph of the cosecant look like, or excuse me, the cotangent look like? That's a good question. It looks similar to the graph of the tangent. It's just it has different asymptotes, and it kind of looks like it's been flipped upside down. So here's the graph of the, the tangent one more time. And let's see, if you go over here and put in a step of, say, pi, 
that makes it a little bit easier to read. So you can see where you've got your asymptotes. Um, let's close that off. Graph of the cotangent, like I said, looks very similar. It's just, it's a decreasing function. It goes down as you move from left to the right um, and has different asymptotes. But overall, it's, it does have a similar shape. In fact, if you were to multiply this by negative 1, um, now it looks very similar to the graph of the tangent, except it's been shifted. It has different asymptotes. Okay. Any questions or comments here on graphs of the tangent or cotangent? I think one thing that I've been pretty clear about is that the important thing is being able to figure out where the asymptotes are. So make sure you can do that, not only for this test, but for the final exam. Oh, you mean here? Yeah. Uh, I just took the midpoint of each of these intervals. Yes. Anything else on this one? Okay, for homework, try problems 7 through 31.